Welcome to this Continuum Lab Instrument Kit Breath Controller Build Video and Tutorial. This is the final video in this first click series where I show you how to make all of the different instruments in the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit. Now I've already covered seven instruments including several different wind instruments, string instruments, keyboard instruments and percussion. All of these come pre-programmed onto the microcontroller in the kit. So even if you don't know anything about coding or microcontrollers, you'll still be able to make any one of these instruments using the click. If you want to get your own and come play along, then you can buy it over at continuumlab.com. Now, the final piece that's missing to complete the click puzzle is a standalone breath controller. And so that's what we're making today. <laughs> A MIDI breath controller is basically the simplest kind of MIDI wind instrument you can imagine, which has just the breath sensor and no keys. So there's no way of selecting notes. But the whole idea of a breath controller is that it's normally used together with another MIDI instrument, typically a keyboard. So the breath controller just sends out a continuous controller signal to control the volume, and then the keyboard or whatever instrument you're using takes care of the note selection. So all we need to make is a breath sensor, and that happens to be one of the click's strongest points. I'll show you two different versions. Both of them use one of the CNY70 sensor modules that come with the kit, together with a plastic bottle top and a balloon membrane to make one of these really sensitive and responsive bottle top breath sensors. Uh, the first build is going to be a simple cardboard setup which uses uh, minimal materials and tools and which has the breakout board uh, with the microcontroller on it outside the sensor setup. The second build is going to be this more fancy and much more compact and also potentially hands-free version here which uses this cool 3D printed body. So let's get building. <laughs> And here we go. So, okay, so here on your left side of the screen are the tools that we'll need. The cardboard is not one of the tools. I just use it to support the uh, hot glue gun here. Then uh, in the middle of the table, we have the stuff that comes with the Continuum Lab instrument kit. Some bits and pieces here, cables, sensor module, breakout board, balloon, of course, the microcontroller. And then over here on this side, we have the stuff that you'll have to bring to the party if you want to build this version of the breath controller. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. So, the first thing uh, I'm going to do is prepare the bottle. We just want the top of it, because we're making a bottle top breath sensor. So uh, I'll just snip off the top like that. And um, then we want to trim down this edge here, just with some scissors. As you can see, it's pretty easy to work with this plastic. You want to leave some edge still on there, which is what's going to help to hold the balloon membrane in place. Okay, so let's just get rid of this little plastic ring here if we have one of those in the bottle. Great, so that's the basic setup for the breath sensor. Next up we'll need to make a support for it. So for this build I'm going for the minimum expression that will do the job. And the job is to hold the um, bottle top and the sensor module at a uh, fixed distance. About uh, a centimeter or a little bit less from the tip of the sensor and to the membrane itself. So I'm going to make a circular piece which is just going to roll around the um, bottle top pressure chamber. And to do that I'm uh, crushing one side of the corrugation here on uh, this corrugated cardboard and then uh, you, I'm able to just roll it easily around uh, the shape that I need. So we'll cut off the excess there. That fits nicely. So now uh, I'm going to use the bottle top itself to make a little mark here in the cardboard uh, at the position that I want it to stay at because I'm going to insert a support at this exact height to keep that uh, bottle top in position. Of course, I need to hold the bottle top at a certain distance from the breath sensor, from the CNY70 sensor module, so I'm going to make a piece of cardboard with the right width for that. So uh, notice that I'm talking about the width between the bottom of the breath sensor of the CNY70 sensor module and the membrane, because uh, I'm going to put another piece of cardboard underneath there uh, as a support for the sensor module. Okay, so. Now we have two pieces of cardboard and the uh, more narrow one is going to go inside of the other one. 
So uh, rather than glue this together, I'm just going to use a uh, rubber band to hold it together because I still want to be able to open it up and access the inside. And so now we have the inside piece and I'm rolling that up and just resting it up against the um, the pressure chamber just to check the position and then I'm making the third piece of cardboard that I talked about. This is going to be a round uh, disc made to size to fit inside of the larger cylinder. So uh, that's going to just go right on top or should, should I say below the inner cylinder. So now I want to glue the inner cylinder to that little disc that I just made. So I'm just to make sure that I hold the right size of the inner cylinder, I'm just pulling it out so that it protrudes from the outer cylinder. Uh, then before I glue anything together, I'm actually just going to make the hole in it where the pins from the sensor module will go through. And um, then pull some cables through, a little triple cable here. And then I'm going to insert that uh, into the uh, sensor module and pull everything down snug with the surface. Notice that the black part of the sensor module is in the middle of the disc. So the pins don't go through the middle. You need to put the actual sensor module in the middle of the disc. And so now I'm gluing it down into place with some hot glue and um, just hold it in place until the glue sets. Excellent. Okay, so now I can glue the disc to the inner cylinder. Make sure that the cylinder uh, protrudes a good bit from the outer cylinder just so that you don't inadvertently glue it to that outer cylinder. You want to still be able to insert it inside afterwards. So once the glue is set, you'll see that uh, that um, disc will hold that cylinder more or less in the shape. But we can also put a little bit of glue here on the actual fold just to make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, unroll. Excellent. So that's the sensor holder. And uh, this is going to fit nicely inside the larger cylinder. But uh, I don't want it to slip around in there. And I don't actually want to glue it together permanently because I want to still be able to open up and adjust stuff. So I'm putting a little bit of hot glue on the outside of the smaller cylinder. And I'm flattening that out a little bit and just allowing it to set without actually gluing the cylinder to anything. And then that's going to be a friction surface so that once I roll the larger cylinder around it like this, it's going to be stuck in one fixed position inside there. So now we have this setup where I can just put the uh, actual pressure chamber from the bottle top on top and it's going to always be the same distance from the CNY70 sensor module. So now we're ready to apply the membrane to the pressure chamber. And this is pretty simple. We just take one of these metallic balloons and cut it in half following the little fold that you typically get from these when they come from the factory. That'll give us two membranes so we can use the other one later. And uh, then I'm just... Uh, actually noticing right now that I didn't make any holes in the in the bottle cap. Okay, I can't be bothered to do that right now. I'm going to grab the um, bottle cap that I already made for this uh, recorder MIDI controller in the previous build, and I'm just going to put that on there. So uh, I'll get back to how we make these holes for the second build. So right now I'm just going to put this um, balloon membrane on top here and hold it in place with a rubber band. Make sure you get the rubber band on there nice and tight so uh, you don't get any leaks. And as you can see, it flexes when, when I blow, blow into the hole, and that's exactly what we want. So uh, trim down the balloon a little bit because we're going to now want to insert this inside the outer cylinder of the whole setup, and we don't want too much balloon flopping around all over the place. Excellent. And so that's the whole breath sensor basically put together. And um, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty sure this is going to work nicely. So uh, that's a nice, small and compact sort of handheld unit for the breath controller. But we still need some electronics. So I'm just going to actually... Um, oh, damn it. I need to plug this in, but I forgot to check what side of the breath uh, sensor module is actually ground. So I'm just opening it up, checking on the little tiny breakout board in there. And so now I know which uh, cable is ground. And I'm going to make sure when I plug that into the breakout board that that cable goes to the ground rail on the uh, analog uh, connector. The other thing that we need to uh, plug in here, of course, is the calibration button module. So that's pretty simple. We get one of these double cables, connect that to the module, and then we just plug that into the calibration um, connector. <laughs> So I'm actually just going to glue this button down on the breakout board itself because we don't have a, a sort of an instrument structure to put everything inside or onto. But uh, that's going to work nicely and now everything is connected. So yeah, like I said, this is 
really simple build and uh, it should work nicely. So all that's left to do now is uh, connect the micro USB onto the microcontroller and uh, now we can plug this into the computer and see if everything works. Okay, that's the first one built and finished. Let's try it with a keyboard. Now any commercial MIDI keyboard that you have on hand should work just fine, but so will the Click Seaboard, which is what I'm going to use. Uh, the most important thing, of course, is that uh, the breath controller and the keyboard are both outputting on the same MIDI channel, and also that the keyboard isn't outputting any uh, volume control of its own. So I'll make sure that the Seaboard options are set correctly. You can have a look at the Seaboard companion video if you want to know more about how its settings work. So now the Seaboard is outputting notes with velocity values on MIDI channel 1 and the breath controller is outputting its continuous controller number 2 MIDI messages also on channel 1. That works great. Although now that I'm actually playing it, I realize that that's really not very different from just playing the seaboard on its own in its melodica setting. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. I think using the breakout board is actually overkill for making a breath controller. I mean, we're just connecting the breath sensor and nothing else. So we should be fine with just the TNC microcontroller on its own. Let's do it. Back on the desk. Okay, so the second build is actually even simpler. We have more or less the same tools here, except this time I actually brought some hole making tools. I'm going to show you how I make those holes in the um, in the bottle top and the bottle cap, uh, to be exact. So I have a few different options here, and uh, we'll have a look at those a little bit later. Um, in the middle of the desk, you can see that we have more or less the same stuff from the Continuum Lab instrument kit as last time, except uh, this time I brought some food grade silicone tubes and uh, those are optional, but they will help to um, expand the options of the breath controller. So that's pretty cool. And you can see we don't have a breakout board this time, we're just using the um, bare bones microcontroller which will allow us to make it everything more compact. And then you can see I brought this breath sensor holder here, which is uh, a 3D printed one that comes with the Continuum Lab instrument kit. And it's very practical, it holds onto the bottle top and makes it uh, easy to always have the same distance between the sensor module and the membrane. But uh, for this build, I actually made this version here. So as you can see, the tip of it is exactly the same. It has the same sort of holder for the bottle top, but here inside we have some cutouts and that's so that I can fit the microcontroller inside and make this really nice sort of compact design here for this build. There's also a specific cutout of course for the CNY70 sensor module and then a little cutout here on the side for the button module, the calibration button module. as a hole at the back end where the uh, USB cable will fit in and then of course uh, the uh, top cutout for the pressure chamber itself. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we need to trim down the bottle top considerably when we're using these 3D printed models here because uh, not all bottle tops are the same and the one I have here is sort of wide. So I'm trimming down, then I'm putting everything together just to see and I can see there's still a little bit of a gap there so I'm going to have to go back with my scissors, trim off a little bit more. Also make sure that you don't have any sort of uh, leftover material from the actual 3D print on your models here. So, um, okay, so just keep trimming down until you get it. Make sure you just trim off a little bit at a time so you don't go too far. And that's looking very good, very precise. Remember, you're going to have some balloon on here as well, so that's going to take up another maybe quarter of a millimeter or something like that. Excellent. So, okay, let's uh, get down to uh, making some holes in the bottle cap. So I really like this uh, hole making tool here. This is a punch. And uh, this is about seven millimeters, which is uh, a nice size for a breath hole. So we're gonna um, fit this uh, silicone tube 
through here. This is food grade silicone, and this is an eight millimeter outer diameter tube. And you can see it's sort of squeezed through that hole there, which is going to make a nice hermetic seal. At least if the hole has a nice edge on it, you need to make sure you get a clean cut. So we also need a, a hole for the air to escape through. And for that, I'm just using this little uh, watchmaker's screwdriver here. You could use a drill, you could use a smaller hole punch. Then I'm grabbing this sort of uh, punch here, which is going to help me to expand the hole a little bit. Really anything that will uh, leave a nice hole could work. And so uh, this is just what I'm using in this case. Okay, so then we uh, have the full um, pressure chamber assembled and be ready to move on. So now we can put the membrane on there. You can see I'm sort of doing everything in reverse order here, but it really doesn't matter. You get the membrane on there. We have a slightly long rubber band, so I need to pull it around there three times. And then we can uh, again insert the silicone tube. And as you can see, that works really nicely. You get continuous flow with these breath sensors because of the uh, exit hole. And you could use the smaller silicone tube, which is five millimeter external diameter, to uh, guide the uh, humid air away from the breath sensor through the uh, exit hole. But uh, yeah, we'll get back to that a little bit later. Good, so as you can see, that fits nicely and uh, we're ready to start inserting the electronics. So before we insert any of the modules like this CNY70 sensor module or the uh, button module, we need to insert the cables into them. Of course, the button module specifically uh, is going to be glued into place with two little drops of glue. Here we have one drop of glue where the solder from the pins is right there and then on the opposite edge. Just make sure you don't get any glue onto the actual button, which would be disastrous and it wouldn't work at all. So uh, that fits nicely. Just allow that to set. And uh, let's see if the microcontroller fits in here. So, okay, I'm just realizing now that um, this cable is not going to work. This double header here is a bit of a problem because I need to plug this into the to the microcontroller, not the breakout board. So these two pins are not going to be right next to each other. So I need separate cables for the sensor modules, both the CNY70 and the button module. So just uh, make sure you get those instead. Okay, so now while I insert the sensor module, the microcontroller and the button module, I need to make sure that I plug things in as I go because uh, it gets a bit messy in this small space with the cables from all of the modules together. I can't really show you that on film in this tight space, but uh, let's have a look at the connection graphic. <laughs> Great, so now everything is plugged in and uh, I'm sort of fiddling around with the modules here and cables to make sure that they all fit in the cutout and don't uh, obstruct the uh, two pieces here as they fit together. So now we fit them together around the bottle top pressure chamber and then once that done, well, that's done, we can um, hold them together with some rubber bands in these sort of exterior cutouts here which are made just for that purpose. And uh, let's put the other one on there as well. And uh, that's basically it. So like I mentioned, one option here is to use a silicone tube and I'll show you how to use this with and without in just a second. Um, but of course, uh, first we need to plug this into the computer and uh, just check if everything works. Let's do it. So that's the second prototype, works nicely, but playing handheld like this is not super practical. What I really want to be able to do is use both hands to play the keyboard. So that's where the silicone tube comes in. This is pretty much the simplest way to do that. Uh, I mean, you could make a cool headset to hold the whole thing up to your mouth, but I'll leave that up to you. The uh, 3D printed parts can be downloaded from the link in the description. So Feel free to download that or design something fancier yourself. And that's it. I won't be making a companion video for this build because it's just so simple. I'll just quickly go over the settings right now. There are only two different options on this instrument. 
One is to change the media output to channel 2 by inserting a jumper into option pin 2. Or if you're not using the breakout, then you can short the Teensy's pin number 4 to ground with a jumper cable. The other option is to change the volume output from CC number 2 to CC number 7 by inserting a jumper into the analog pin 9 header between the signal and ground pins. Or again, if you're using the Teensy directly, you can short pin 24 to ground. As far as problems that you might run into with this instrument, seeing as there's only one sensor on here, that's also really simple. You can basically have the same kind of trouble that you might have with any of the other click instruments which have a breath sensor, so I'll put some links to that down in the description. Like I mentioned, the standalone breath controller is the final build in this whole series, and it's the last of the eight instruments which you can make using the Continuum Lab instrument kit. I might revisit the breath controller at a later date, to uh, incorporate some cool features like uh, built-in pitch bend. But this simple one is the one that's uh, pre-programmed onto the click right now. Super easy to make, no soldering or programming required as you've seen. And that's all I have for you this time. Go check out the uh, build videos and tutorials for the rest of the Continuum Lab instrument kit. The whole series is now available right here on the channel. And don't forget, you can buy the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself, as well as various types of click instruments over at ContinuumLab.com. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the Continuum.